Wow, well, we, what a 24 to 48 hours that was in the trade period. It goes for a week and a half, nearly two weeks, and everything happens on the last day. It was incredible, and the big names and very surprising trades that did happen at the end. Well, how was how was last night for you? Well, I was watching it quite intensely. It all happened in the last minute of the trade period. Everything pretty much got done, and it was a bit of a lackluster couple of weeks. And then, all, like you said, came all the way down to the last day, which makes you think, should the trade period be a bit shorter? Absolutely. I mean, you can, you can get you can get all that done. Well, I mean, how long can it take to negotiate a certain deal? I mean, like, for example, the Adam Saad one, he, he nominated Carlton a month ago um, and it took him to the second last day of the trade period to actually get the deal done. Like, I just don't understand what, what they're talking about and how it can take that long. You know, surely you can just nut it out in one big day and just get it done. You'd think so. You'd think so. Look, give them a couple of days. I'm happy to give them a few days to do it. But these yeah. deals are being spoken about early in the season. Like midway through the year, clubs are already looking at what they're going to be doing come trade period. They don't wait for this week to start and then they start doing it. You know what I mean? They wait. Um, they, they don't wait, sorry. They do it from the midway through the year. So the fact that it goes to two weeks and then, like you said, nothing gets done in the last day or two anyway, you may as well just shorten it and make people make a decision earlier. Absolutely. And it just, it would make it a lot more exciting and, um, you know, there was a lot of days there where we were listening to the trade radio and literally nothing was happening. It was boring. And um, I mean, if you condense it and, you know, something happens every day, then that's going to be a lot more exciting than, you know, keeping the fans waiting, you know, as exciting as it is on the last day, instead of keeping the fans waiting a week and a half or something to something big to happen anyway. So, yeah, I think it should definitely be condensed. And wasn't there talk that they're going to uh, make a, another trade period this season? Yeah, yeah. So SEN reported they were going to be doing another, and may be doing another trade period. They've I discussed it. I think it's because they're going to wait till the um, salary cap and list sizes gets announced. So once those numbers are released, so you're giving clubs an opportunity to tidy up their lists a little bit that way. But they really should have pushed the trade period and waited for those numbers anyway, and done that to begin with instead of that now potentially having two trade periods, which. You know, we might see a couple more deals get done, but I think all the ones that everyone was excited about have already happened. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know about it. They're probably just trying to help out Collingwood who are absolutely stuffed up their, their whole list, really, you know, in, in one day. Ned, so, Ned um, Guy is, a, is not a very uh, liked man at the moment by Collingwood fans. No, I thought you we were going to say he's not a liked guy at the moment, but that would have that would have uh, been right that up your alley. That's sort of joke. <laughs> that would that would have been good. I should have gone with that. Disappointed <laughs> in myself. All right. Well, let's let's uh, let's start back um, from when we last spoke. So we won't talk about the trades that we spoke about last week. But I mean, there was only a handful of them anyway. Um, but the first deal that really got done at the start of this week was Peter Wright from Gold Coast to Essendon. Um, pretty straightforward one. That one. Essendon need a key forward. They just traded out Sean McCoon and St Kilda on the same day. So um, getting Peter Wright in to, to fill their needs is a good one. I think that's a pretty, I mean, it's a win-win for both teams. Yeah, win-win for both teams. And they're the best deals um, when they're both win-wins. And Peter Wright's a pretty handy player. I know at one point I wouldn't have minded him at Richmond to take over Jack eventually. So Essendon have got a pretty good player there. And I think uh, Gold Coast are pretty happily compensated. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, Bombers supporters were pretty happy with that one. And yeah, he'll be a good player for them for the next few, le- few years. Um, another a smallish deal that got done on the same day as well was Mitch Hannon from Melbourne to the Bulldogs. He yeah, couldn't really get it. It was in and out of the side this season at the D's. So um, opportunity has presented himself at the Bulldogs in a pretty star-studded team at the moment, aren't they? The dogs are absolutely stacked, and we'll get into it a little bit, you know, as we continue. But they've got some great players at the moment, so hopefully Mitch Hannon's he's moving for an opportunity. Hopefully he can still find that at the Bulldogs, despite um, you know some of the players have got in at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he'll be a handy little player there on the half forward flank. Um, and moving on, I know this was also on the same day. Braden Cruz, Melbourne to GWS. He's a bit of a journeyman. I mean, mm-hmm. like the quickest journeyman. I mean, he's only been in the system four or five years and he's already at his third club. Yeah, he's moved around a little bit, Braden Proust. He just can't seem to he just can't seem to find a dedicated spot. But I mean, coming from Melbourne with Max Gorn as the key ruckman, he was never really gonna 
take over there. And where, where was he before? Was it North before that? North, yeah. Todd Goldstein. You're not going to really double take yeah. Todd Goldstein, are you? So he needs he goes, to find somewhere where he's going to be the main ruckman. Exactly right. So I think GWS should be a good fit for him. I just um, I guess it's all a waiting game now, but hopefully he can find some form there and yeah, play some consistent footy. Absolutely. And another ruckman that found a new home was Stefan Martin from Brisbane to the Bulldogs. For mine, this is a very underrated trade. Stefan Martin was arguably one of the best ruckmen two or three years ago. Um, and he goes to the Bulldogs. who have already got Tim English. Um, and as we mentioned before, their team is pretty stacked at the moment. So I think this is an unbelievable get for the Dogs. And um, they you know, gave away nothing to get him as well. So unbelievable piece of business. Yeah, this is this is a great deal by the dogs. They've done so well this trade period. And, um, and Steph Martin's going to be a real helping hand to Tim English as well. You know, Tim English is still young. Steph Martin's been in the system for a little while now. So we've got to show him the ropes a little bit and potentially give English um, even a chance to go forward occasionally and take a few clangers down there. So um, it makes for a little more versatility for the dogs. And they've got a yeah, very good player on their hands. Absolutely, yeah. He'll uh, do very well there. Um, a couple of... Geelong players, a couple of youngsters got traded as well. Uh, Lockie Fogarty from Geelong to Carlton and Nikai Cockatoo to Brisbane. Both just couldn't get a crack in a very strong Geelong midfield and forward line. Um, yeah, Fogarty's going to Carlton as that small forward that they desperately need and uh, will we'll pinch it through the midfield as well. And he was a former top 20 pick back in 2017. So um, he's obviously got some talent and I think that's a really good pickup for the Blues. Yeah, massively. And like you said, he just fills that role that you guys are looking for in that small forward position. So you've got yourselves a pretty handy player. And, um, you know, coming from a strong side like Geelong, it's unfortunately when you're up the top, you start to lose a few good players because they're just not going to fit into your side the way you'd like them to. So Carlton have got a very good one in their hands. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, pretty excited by him. Um, and then, yeah, Nakai Cockatoo as well, off, off to Brisbane. Just couldn't get his body right over the last few years. And, you know, you speak to a lot of Geelong supporters and they've... Uh, you know, they speak very highly of him. He's got a lot of talent. Um, and if you can get his body right, he's going to be a, a serious player at the Lions um, who have already got a very, very talented list. So he could uh, he could do some really good things up there. They're just adding to their stock, Brisbane, at the moment. And yeah, he's, he's an exciting player, Nakai Cocker too. It's just a shame his body wasn't quite right. But I think, like you said, if you can get it right, um, Brisbane fans will be very happy to have him. Absolutely. And my personal favourite trade of the trade period, which surprise, comes, surprise. As, comes as no surprise to a lot of people, is Adam Saad from Essendon to Carlton. <laughs> oh, boy, this is exciting. I mean, we, we parted with pick eight, which you know a lot of people are saying it's overs, but I think it's fair considering the player that we needed. Um, you know, he replaces Cade Simpson on that halfback flank. He provides unbelievable speed and drive and dash. He's going to be a, a super player and he's in the prime of his career. So I think the deal was was very fair. Um, and I just love it that, you know, he wanted to leave Essendon and come to their biggest rival in the Blues, which makes it even sweeter. Taylor, it's stirring the pot a little bit there, isn't it, with uh, the rivalry between Carlton and Essendon. But yeah, Sard's, a, Sard's an unbelievable player. He's, um, he's going to fit that role really nicely there at Carlton. But I'll tell you what, you just, I mean, like you said, people are complaining about the pick eight thing. I think it's worth it. I mean, you didn't really need to get some really good players in the draft. You've already got young players at the moment. You're not looking to, you know, you're, you're probably more concerned about running, having your tilt now and getting some more experience in like Saad, who's still young, but also got good experience under him. So he's going to be great. And I reckon he'll perform quite nicely. Yeah, absolutely. Really looking forward to, to watching him play over the next few years and, um, yeah, you know, in front of big crowds and, you know, Carlton have got a really passionate supporter base and just watching him fly down the wings and, um, yeah, kick some quick freakish goals. It's going to be um, it's going to be fun to watch. So yeah, really can't really can't wait to watch him play, especially round one against the Tigers. Hopefully in front of a big crowd as well. So um, you know, love love the trade, and um, yeah, I think the Blues are Blues are ready now. There's no more excuses. They've uh, they've spent big, and their their list is is developing, and um, yeah, they're ready to go. And it's finals or nothing next year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. It is. With the list they've got now, if they don't play the finals next year, uh, there's going to be more to it than their list then because they've got very yep. good players on their list at the moment and there's no excuses. I mean, oh, I didn't want to bring this one back up, but if Charlie can be right for round one, 
um, after what happened recently, then there's definitely no excuses because you've got everything you need. What did I say to you off air just before? Not to mention Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I had for to, at I least had, another month. <laughs> I had to, I had to mention Charlie. I needed to see, and I, I wanted to call you bluff. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. No, look, Charlie Kerner, obviously very disappointing. We don't have a full diagnosis yet, so I'm not going to get too uh, too emotional and upset about it until we know exactly how long he's going to be out for. But either way, it is disappointing that he's injured again because yeah, he's really he is that he is that he's the man that's going to take us there. He's um. Yeah, one of the best young key forwards in the game. So it is disappointing, but hopefully he's not out for too long. All right, let's move on from the Adam Saad trade. Um, a bit of a surprising one, this one. Ali Ali from Sydney to Port Adelaide. Didn't really see this coming. I mean, he, he seemed like a pretty uh, you know, pretty settled player at Sydney. He was you know, playing every week. He was really solid down back, um, played in the ruck as well. And um, he's moved to Port Adelaide on a, on a pretty big deal as well. Yeah, I, like you said, this one came out of the blue a little bit. I didn't expect to see this one at all, but I guess Port probably figured, you know, another one to come in. Was it uh, was it Westhoff that retired last yep. year or this year? Well, yep. probably comes in, fills that role a little bit in one sense. So uh, Ali really has got some great, great opportunity at Port and Port are going to have another premiership tilt next year. They're going to be right out there again. So Ali really is going to help them along the way and he probably figured Sydney didn't aren't looking like going anywhere to, you know, in the near future. So moved on. But yeah, I didn't see one coming this one coming, but Port Adelaide have got themselves a fairly handy player. Yeah, absolutely. Just adding to their stocks for their uh, tilt of the flag after you know finishing on top and, and not making it. So um, yeah, they, they they look like they're going all out for it. Um, next trade was Sean Higgins from North Melbourne to Geelong. Um, Big one, this one. You know, the Cats are another team going big. It's all chips in now for Geelong after you know making the grand final and, and falling short in that one. They're, they're going all out. They're, they're bringing in experience and paying big money for them as well. So Sean Higgins is probably just going to replace you know Gary Ablett's role, that half forward, pinch it in the midfield and, and kick your, your few goals. Um, and, and, you know, he's an absolute unbelievable ball user as well. So he's going to be really good at the Cats, isn't he? Yeah, he's going to be fantastic at the Cats. And I guess it was a good move for him. North Melbourne are looking at bringing a lot of young players in. So to move to Geelong and get that last chance at a bit of success, he'll probably have another year or two in him. I think he's only 30, so he's got another couple of years in him. And like you said, Geelong, it's really now or never for the Cats. Um, I was so close this year, couldn't quite get it done. And just from this trade period alone, you can see that they're, they're going all out to win this one. But yeah, so Sean Higgins will be great. And like you said, he'll just pick up that Gary Ablett role and it's... I mean, it's almost like Gary never left, really, with that, a similar type of player um, taking over the role. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Geelong have done very well there. Uh, next try was Tom Hickey from West Coast to Sydney. Um, look, not a lot to talk about here. Tom Hickey, very similar to Braden Proust, or oh, just can't get a can't get a, a spot as a main ruck. He's just been stuck behind some elite ruckmen, so he moves to I think it's his third or fourth club. Yeah, he's been yeah. around as been around to a few. So um yeah, all the best to him at Sydney. Um I mean, yeah, this 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 deal got done quite easily as well. Yeah, there wasn't too much of a back and forth of this one. I think Sydney probably could use a ruckman and Tom Hinkie could use a, a spot in the team. So I think this is a good a good deal for both teams. Yeah, absolutely. Now this is this trade is the one that I feel like is the biggest one. Um and one that's I mean, it is high profile, but I just still feel like it's so underrated to the, his worth and what he's going to bring to this team. And that's Ben Brown from North Melbourne to Melbourne. This And for pick 26, I think it was as well. It's ridiculous. This guy, you know, kicked 60 plus goals three years in a row. He's in the prime of his career. Uh, just had one bad year at North Melbourne. He was injured and, you know, in a hub and probably didn't suit him, but he's a superstar. And Melbourne are crying out for that big power forward and they've got him and geez, if he if he finds that form again, he's gonna put Melbourne right up the ladder. I'm putting money on it now. He will find that form again. With uh, Melbourne's midfield at the moment, they've got a pretty handy midfield themselves. They'll, they'll hit Ben Brown up just the way he likes it and he'll go back and kick a few, especially after this season. He'll want to prove himself again. But yeah, he probably played half a bad season. Like they 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 just wouldn't pick him and put him back in the side to give him his opportunity. So I think silly on North's behalf to sort of, you know, finish him off there like the way they did. But Melbourne have got a great pickup and he fills the role they so desperately needed. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, yeah for mine. It's the, it's the best uh, best piece of business over the trade period. So f- oh, not so far. Definitely is now that all trades are done. So yeah, Ben Brown is um, he's going to be unbelievable for Melbourne, and I know a lot of Melbourne supporters are very excited by him, and he could be the difference between them being mediocre and and being back into that top four as they were a couple of years ago. So see how that goes for for Melbourne. Um, all right, moving on to Jack Higgins, Richmond to St Kilda. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you discuss this one. Yeah, well, obviously it was a uh, Richmond stated they didn't want to let him leave, and Jack made it pretty clear that he was he wanted to move on and find better opportunity. He's another one of the players, and there's a few of those in his draft that just leave him purely for opportunity. He, you know, there's a lot of players at Richmond that played a similar role to him, and um, he was in and out of the side this year again. Um, you know, after coming back from brain surgery though, so to be fair to him, to even make it back into the side was massive for him. But yeah, he was in and out of the side, and he probably figured. I want to go, you know, chase a bit more game time. I want to play footy. It's what he wants to do. And St Kilda were the right fit for him. And he barracked for them growing up. Is uh, has been blown up all over the media lately. I think everybody knows it now. Everyone, you know, every dog in his uh, in his bones. So everyone knows about it at the moment. But yeah, Jack Higgins is uh, can slot in nicely to St Kilda and play alongside old teammate Danny Butler. Yeah, they're going to have an elite little forward line, aren't they? Um, Jack Higgins can rediscover that form from was it twenty eighteen, even twenty nineteen. Um, yeah, he's, and he's still what, 21. It's it's incredible. Yeah. So, yeah, I think the Saints have done really well there and they're another huge winner of this trade period, aren't they? Yeah, they're another one. They're another one that's done really well. And um, I'll tell you what, just next year is going to be scary with some of the teams and the way they're stacked at the moment, like Bulldogs, St Kilda, um, Geelong, Richmond, Melbourne, if they get, if they come good again. There's going to be a Carlton with the players they've got. There's a lot of teams next year that are going to push for it. Uh, Port Adelaide. So, and Saints are going to, yeah, with, with the picks they've picked up, they're going to be very good this year and hard to beat. Yeah, absolutely. All right, another, um, another trade that went through was a little bit surprising as well, considering what was sent in return for him was Alex Witherden from Brisbane to West Coast. Um, you yeah, know, he's a very good young player a couple of years ago at the Lions. Uh, just couldn't get, a, couldn't get a spot in the team this year. Um, and West Coast have found a way to get him across and, um, he's going to slot in very nicely as he's still very young as well. So um, he's going to be a very good player for the next 10 years. And yeah, West Coast didn't have to give up much for him. So this is a really good, really, really good pickup for them. Yeah, win, 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 win for both player and club in terms of West Coast and Alex himself. He just, like you said, another one trying to find opportunity and West Coast sort of needed that sort of player. Young, he'll be there for a little while, like you mentioned. So yeah, great deal for both both parties. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's get to the real juicy ones now. This is this is where it all went down in the last, oh geez, last, I wouldn't even say the last few hours. I'd say the last hour, half an hour, 10 minutes, five minutes, one minute. Jaden Stevenson, Collingwood to North Melbourne. What the hell happened there? Oh, uh, mate, there's so many rumours going around at the moment. I'll tell you what, Ned, Ned, Ned guy, eat your heart out. But uh, <laughs> they're... Um, the rumours going around at Collingwood at the moment in terms of player-coach relationship, et cetera, et cetera. I heard a juicy one today, but it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Steven to the gun, he had, what, he had a poor season this year coming off no preseason. Um, he had the whole gambling saga, which for a young guy, that would get to you. Then I guess, yeah, you have the quarantine and all the rest of it, like everybody did, though. But coming off no preseason and all that, he had an average year to his standards, but he's still a young player. In his first two years, he was unbelievable, and he's going to be an absolute gun, and Collingwood is silly to let him go. Yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. And the the interview that he did not long after it as well was pretty explosive. And you know, he had a fair crack at the club and and Buckley as well. So Buckley's been he's been um, criticised a fair bit by a lot of Collingwood supporters and and a couple of departing players as well. So it's going to be interesting the fallout from Collingwood over the next few weeks, few months, even all the next year and, and the years to come. So it's going to be crazy. This trade period's really, really been um, oh, the, the social media last night. Collingwood fans went to meltdown over some of these trades. Just it's not just for the players that went out; it's for what they got in return for them. It's literally, like they just wanted to get rid of them and just clear them off their books. Was Stevenson um, contracted? Yeah, yeah, he was. Was he? Was. He? Yeah. So there you go. It's the decisions that Collingwood decided to make were just. I don't know. Yeah, I've got no idea. I would be filthy if I was a Collingwood supporter right now. And I'm pretty sure most of them are. You just hope that there's some kind of payoff for all this. That Collingwood have some kind of plan 
you know, in motion that then haven't quite revealed to anybody yet. And, or, you know, there's someone they're planning on getting in the draft or whatever it is, you, th- you hope they can somehow redeem themselves. But yeah, I think they've, uh, they've dug their grave a little bit with this trade period. Yeah. Uh, and in the same trade as Jaden Stevenson was at two, Boston of Velagi. Is that a, I no. think that's how you say it. I was I never going to try, I was never going to try to pronounce that, but I think you've done, you've given it a pretty good crack. I'll yeah, give you that. That's, that sounds right. Um, somehow was added into this same trade as Jaden Stevenson to somehow sweeten the deal for North Melbourne, which is incredible. Um, he's a young player, he's 19 years old, 20 years old. So they've traded off two very young, promising players to North Melbourne for not a lot in return, um, which is absurd. And you know, it's uh, upset a lot of Collingwood fans and yeah, just really looking forward to the response from you know, Nathan Buckley, um, the president who we all know and a few other key figures at the pies. Um, it's going to be really interesting to fall out from that over the next uh, few days and few weeks. I look forward to hearing all the juicy news that comes out of Collingwood. Yeah. All right. Another trade that went down as well on deadline day was Orazio Fantasia from Essendon to Port Adelaide. And this one's probably 12 months late. Um, yeah, he wanted to go last year. Bombers couldn't make it happen. They were stubborn. He was still contracted, but they didn't let him go. He didn't want to be there. They kept him, which is what they do with all their players. Um, but they uh, they finally let him go, and he got his uh, dream move to Port Adelaide. That's right, he did. He got the dream move. He's been asking for it for a couple of years now. Apparently, he refused to deal with the Crows as well because Port at one point didn't look like it was going to happen, and apparently Fantasia was not interested in going to Adelaide, even though he said he just wanted to go home. So I think it might have been more, a little bit more club specific than uh, than what was led on. But yeah, it was, like you said, 12 months late. Um, and if Fantasia can get his body right again, he's going to be another another handy pickup for Port Adelaide. And once again, another team is going to be very hard to stop next year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you can get his body right and rediscover that form from 2017, 2018, uh, yeah, he's going to be unbelievable pickup for the power. And yeah, really... Uh, Get them on the um, on the move for the premiership next year, which is yeah, with Fantasia and Elia Lee coming in, it's going to be um, it's going to be very very strong port team next year. All right, another controversial Collingwood trade was Tom Phillips to Hawthorne for literally a packet of chips. Well, this pick pick sixty five, but mate, what, 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 this this is just ridiculous. I can't believe it was a straight trade. When I heard it, I thought, oh, there must be more to it. Maybe like a future second or a future first or something like that. But no, it was just a straight swap for Tom Phillips for a pick 65. And if Ned Guy and Colin would genuinely believe that Tom Phillips is worth a pick 65, then someone needs to lose that job. Yeah. Tom Phillips is a, is a gun. I'd take Tom Phillips in a heartbeat of Richmond and Hawthorne have got themselves a very handy player for literally, like you said, a, it may as well have been a packet of chips. Yeah, and he's only 24 years old as well. So he's got a lot of footy ahead of him. And two years ago, he was averaging, I think it was around 25 disposals a game. So like he's he's a very good player. And oh, I mean, like one again, he just had one off year and just looks like Collingwood just don't have a lot of patience for players just have, they just have one off years, don't they? Yeah, well, they, like they said, they were, they reckon Tom Phillips wants to play on the wing and with Dacos and side bottom next year, they just said, oh, it's not really a spot on the wing for you, so you had an off year. See you later. It's ridiculous. Side bottom's not got long left anyway, so you, you, you'd think he would have replaced him, but I don't know. Bizarre, bizarre trading from the Pies again, but that's not even the last of them. We'll get to that towards the end. We do come back. Uh, um, Jai Caldwell went from JD West to Essendon for pick 29 and a future second. And Essendon, they targeted him. They've been linked to him for a few weeks and, and they got him the... I mean, he hasn't played a lot of football, but he's, he's highly touted at the Giants. And um, yeah, he seems to be a, a really good talent. And um, we'll, I guess we, we don't, yeah, we don't, haven't seen much of him, but Essendon obviously rate him highly enough to, to trade like that for him. Yeah, well, I, I don't know too much about Joe Caldwell myself, like um, same as you, I guess. But uh, I'm surprised Dodoro uh, got the deal done. Normally he's very stubborn. I'm surprised he didn't ask for Jeremy Cameron in return from GWS or something like that. But um, in this part of the deal, Joe Caldwell and Jeremy Cameron as well for that 29 in the future seconds. So I don't know. But um, I'm, yeah, I think Essendon are happy they've got their man and GWS have done pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a, I mean, yeah. 29 a future second for Jai Caldwell. I think, yeah, JDBS would be pretty happy with that, even though 
yeah, they rate him very highly, but yeah, I think Essendon have given up a fair bit for him and they obviously rate him really highly too. So we'll, uh, I guess it's just a, a wait and see with him. We don't know too much and just see how he goes over the next few years. All right, juicy one. Again, Adam Trelaw, Collingwood to the Bulldogs for pick 14 in a future second. Oh, God, Collingwood. <laughs> yeah. What happened? But I, I I was talking to you last night, and I, um, and the, cat, the clock went down and hit, or well, hit zero. I'm pretty sure, and it, it looked like Trelaw was just staying at Collingwood, and we thought, oh, geez, this is going to be awkward. And then the news came out that the deal got done, that he'd gone to the Dogs, and geez, once again, going back to the Dogs, how stacked are they right now with Trelaw in their midfield now? And Dunkley staying. Dunkley is another one that was supposed was linked yeah. to Essendon and never moved, so he stayed as well as and they kept him and got Trelaw. That's yeah. huge. So the Bulldogs midfield next year, off the top of my head, is Bontempelli, Dunkley, Trelaw, Liberatore, Lockie Hunter, Bailey Smith. Then you got Stephen Martin and Tim English as your ruckman. It's not bad, isn't it? Did you mention McRae? Oh, no, I didn't. Jackson <laughs> McRae as well. Unbelievable. <laughs> but yeah, it's absolutely stacked. And then just to think... With the midfield they've got now, someone like Bont and Pally could spend a little bit more time up forward and do the danger field dusty type thing. And he's dangerous up forward, Bont and Pally, when he's in front of the goals. So just oh, it's scary to think how good that could be next year with um, their pickups. Yeah, absolutely. And then, yeah, Trelaw came out today. Um, yeah, this morning, actually, is uh, his first press conference as a Bulldogs player. And he, uh, he went bang at Collingwood as well. Well, not... Not Collingwood as a whole, but like he, uh, yeah, he revealed that the, the chat that he had with Nathan Buckley and uh, Buckley told him that senior players wanted him out and then he found out that wasn't true. So what's going on there? Like they've got serious issues down at, at Collingwood and their culture and what was going on. Whoever was in charge of their salary cap or, or in charge of all this is going to have a lot to pay for, that's for sure. So um, yeah, Troller obviously didn't want to leave. He had a few more years left in his contract. He was getting paid a lot of money. And I think Collingwood are going to pay about $300 a year. Uh, $300,000 $300, a year. Mate, talk about from a packet of chips. <laughs> $300,000 a year to the Bulldogs to pay his, uh, some of his salary. So it's it's incredible what went down at Collingwood. And yeah, Adam Troller is now, now a, a doggy. And um, yeah, they're going to be, they're right now, they're, they're right up there in premiership calculations for next year. That's for sure. They have to be. But what kind of message is that, um, does this send to other Collingwood players that have four, five-year deals at the moment? You wouldn't feel safe. Absolutely not. And and what about players that they're going to try to track to their club you know, next season? No. Nah. Yeah. Like, I mean, Trelaw, I mean, you know, I've mentioned this a few times. Trelaw famously a few years ago opted to go to Collingwood over Richmond and potentially some other clubs because he, he had faith in their list. He liked the way they were going. He liked everything about them. And then this is how they were paying him. He's got four years still on his contract and they say, nah, catch you later. Yeah. And especially, you know, with mixed messages being sent around Buckley saying senior players didn't want him. Um, apparently it's not true. I heard rumours Pendlebury was trying to convince him to stay, but I think the damage was done. The bridges were burnt and Trelaw's got the deal he wants. He can stay in Melbourne, stay home, doesn't have to worry about any of that now. And yeah, he's gone to a very handy club. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, as we've said before, very looking forward to the uh, the response from the from the pies and uh, the key figures there over the next uh, next few days. And I tell All you right. what, just quickly as well, cut you off quickly. Yep. They're going to hope whoever they pick up in the draft is good because Ned Guy kept referring to the fact that, oh, we're going to the draft. We're looking to improve our list to the draft. With the players we've gotten rid of, you'd better hope that you get some serious talent out of this draft. Because you've lost faith in everybody if you don't, that's for sure. Absolutely, there. They're going to want to get them right, that's for sure. And I mean, yeah, all you need to do is look on social media at the moment. And Collingwood fans have are either not signing, not re-signing their memberships, or they've already burnt the memberships that they they they, they did get for next season. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's all uh, a bit crazy at uh, at the Holden Centre at the moment. All right. Another high-profile trade that went down at the last second was Jeremy Cameron from GWS to Geelong for picks 13, 15, and 20. So they've sold the farm for him. They, they're, yeah, as I've said before, they're going all in for that for that flag next year. And you know, if they don't win it next year, then, then what? What they couldn't they literally couldn't have done anymore. No, if they don't win it next year, I think you have to look at Chris Scott's position as coach. 
how long has he been around for? And I haven't won, uh, you know, since 2011, he won it in his first year. They've been close ever since, but can't, can't quite seem to get it done. And with the team they've got now, there's genuinely no excuses. So I don't know. I'm, you know, they gave him three first round picks for him. When Jedebus originally said they didn't want picks, I wanted players. They couldn't get it done. And right at the last minute, yep, they got three first round picks for, uh, for Cameron. And Cameron's gone to a very dangerous team in Geelong. Yeah. Unbelievable. Him and Hawkins up front. It's going to be a, a very scary forward line. Um, and geez, it's going to, yeah, it's going to stretch a lot of defences next year. So, you know, it's, it's literally premiership or nothing for Geelong. So pressure's going to be absolutely on them come round one or even throughout the whole season and the off season as well. So, um, yeah, no more ex- excuses for the Cats. All right. And the last little trade that did go through, I think this one went just a little bit over the deadline, was Nick Hine from St Kilda to Essendon. Um, you know, Essendon finally got their big fish in Nick Hine, and I'm sure they're stoked about that. The big fish. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been planning that one this whole episode, haven't you? <laughs> so the best to last. <laughs> yeah, I, to be honest with you, I didn't even hear this one till this morning. It just went under the radar a little bit. I think we've almost so... Everybody was so focused on what Collingwood had done and Jeremy Cameron gone in Geelong. It flew under the radar a bit, but obviously Essendon wanted Nick Hine, you know, and they, they got the deal done. They've got him. St Kilda, they brought in some handy players at the moment so they could probably afford to let him go. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think he was on Essendon's VFL list a couple of years ago as well. So he, he already knows the club quite well. So um, yeah, it's, it seems like... Surprised he wants to go back then. <laughs> it baffles me. I'm not sure. Not sure what he's doing, what he's thinking, but oh well, he's uh he's made up his mind and he wants to become a bomber, and that's completely fine. Essendon um, must have some uh, some naked photos of him or something there. He doesn't want the people the public seeing. The door has got some <laughs> naked photos of him, so he has to go back. Uh, come on, we can't. We've got a lot of precious Essendon supporters that listen to this uh, podcast. We can't upset them too much. Oh, they're all precious. Let's go on. <laughs> moving on, moving on. All right. Well, that is all the trades done. That is all the trades done. It was a massive trade period, as expected. There was a lot of big names. Um, and, yeah, a lot of controversy attached to a lot of them. And, um, yeah, so, the, yeah, the, the real big, big talking point from it is, is Collingwood and what they've done to their list. And, you know, even Essendon as well, they lost a lot of players and didn't really get a lot of high-profile players back in. So, two big Victorian teams. Ugly two of the biggest teams in the competition have uh, had a bit of an interesting trade period and um, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what they do next season and, um, and yeah, how the, the build-up for them is over the off-season. So, um, but this moves us on to our debate question. Who is the biggest winner of the trade period? What are your, what are your thoughts on that? And it's really, it's, it's too hard to look past the doggies um, after what they've done, keeping Dunkley, getting Trelaw, and all the rest of it, but I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go St Kilda. I think St Kilda have done a really good job with some of the people they've brought in. Um, and they they won a final this year. They did pretty well. They look they look pretty dangerous at different stages throughout the season. And I think next year they're going to be even better. Yeah, I'm going to go the Bulldogs just simply because of their midfield. Now it's it's unbelievable, and um, yeah, to get Adam Trelaw in for yeah for pick 14. Um, and a future second is is, a, is an absolute bargain, and and Steph Martin as well for absolutely nothing. So, yeah, dogs are the biggest winner for mine. So I think I think for a lot of people it's going to be either Bulldogs or St Kilda, isn't it? Yeah, I mean it's really one of the two. I, I mean Bulldogs was it's pretty much equal for me. I just had to pick one, so I went with the Saints. But it's pretty much on par as the two best biggest winners, and I think everyone else will have a pretty similar opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Well. As always, check that out on our Instagram story. Uh, let us know who you think. Um, and we'll have a list to choose from. But if there's anyone on that list that you think um, has done better, then let us know and, and let us know why. So, But, yeah, there's been a few teams that have been big winners and it's going to be interesting. And yeah, all it does is just mount pressure on them for next season to perform. But that is it. That is trade period done. That is this episode done. It's been an uh, exhausting last couple of weeks. It's been a big season and... You know, we're already halfway through November and um, already uh, not too far off next season, which is which is great. So, um, how are you feeling as a Richmond man going into next season? You pretty inactive. What are you What are your thoughts on it? 
Yeah, I'm pretty. Oh, I'm still pretty excited from this season, to be honest. But yeah, a bit nervous considering we were inactive. But in saying that, like, we what were we supposed to do? Who were we yeah, supposed exactly. to bring in? And you know, so I mean, it wasn't much we probably could have done considering. But um, yeah, a bit nervous with some of the teams that are coming up next year with the players they've all gotten. But uh, at least it wasn't a stressful trade period for me. I wasn't waiting to see any deals get done or anything like that. I kind of knew what was going to happen from probably before the trade period started. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, um, yeah, that is us done for this episode. Um, and as we say every week, make sure you leave us a review, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Spotify. We love all the support that's coming through and um, definitely doesn't go unnoticed. It means the absolute world to us. So yeah, keep them coming. Um, but yeah, have a great weekend. Enjoy the uh, the freedom that Melbourne's getting. We've been uh, on an absolute COVID roll lately. We've uh, had a lot of double donut days, which has been unbelievable, hasn't it? 14 days. Today is yeah. officially two weeks with uh, double donuts. So yeah. oh, incredible, incredible stuff for love and life. Um, and it's just great to see people out and about again. And you're back at work. How's that been? Oh yeah, it's been good as well. It's been, been pretty crazy, obviously. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, gyms have been shut for a very long time, so everyone's trying to get back in. But it's been really crazy. But it's good. It's good to be back and and doing something, which is great. So um, yeah, everything's going back to normal now, and well, somewhat normal. And hopefully next week we're we're mask free as well, so we can stop saying you know stay at home, wear your mask. We can be like just go enjoy yourself and do what like we want. used to. Exactly. exactly right. So looking yeah. forward to that. Hopefully that happens. But in the meantime, please do stay safe. Absolutely. Stay safe um, and just let's just keep this COVID roll going and hopefully we can enjoy a, uh, a pretty normal summer and it looks like it's going to be a great one and hopefully we can, you know, and saying that, hopefully we can all go back to the footy next year, which is what we all want. So, um, but yeah, that's it. Have a great weekend and we'll, uh, we'll chat to you soon. Pressure point, pressure point, pressure point.